I'm David Turnbull, I'm an EXP agent in West Devon uh, in Tavistock and I'm joined by Barry Fulver, our illustrious number one global EXP agent. How are you Barry, all right? Very well, thank you. The sun is shining in Davidson, North Carolina, so very well, thank you. How are you today? Yeah, very good, very good. Weather is amazing in the UK at the moment. Congratulations. Things have changed since 2010 when I lived there for sure, so enjoy every minute. Whereabouts were you based in the UK? So where my family is now, which was Hertfordshire, just outside of uh, just outside of Bushy. Right, brilliant. Well, I've, I've been lived in Devon all my life, so uh, I'm a bit of a country bump in a king. What a great place to be. I mean, it's just, there's a reason everybody goes there for holidays. a lovely part of the country, so uh, I'm, I'm pretty envious. No, it is. We're very lucky. Barry, you are instrumental to why EXP expanded in the UK in 2019. I've always been very, very interested in the American market, how it operates, how it works. So I've got a few questions, but I suppose my first question for you is, so you're in, the, in America, you're thinking of moving home. What's the first sort of thing you do in, in terms of selling? That's always the question. Where do they start? Um, they start, so typically every, I would say, and this is probably an accurate statistic here in America, every person probably knows between 15 and 25 real estate agents. So all, automatically, you know of a, a lot of people who know, quote, how to sell your home. But where they start, typically speaking, is research through their, their network or, or through online. We've seen online advertising, social media in particular, as you see, David, you know, has come through so prominently. So if someone wants to sell their home, typically what they do here in America is give a call or send a message to a real estate agent to come out for evaluation, if you will, come by, figure out typically how much the home is worth, learn by which the process of how that happens and they look at what their comparables are so say their home down the street no one knows that as you know this no one knows their own neighborhood better than the person who lives in the neighborhood so they come out get a fair idea of what their home is worth learn a little about the process of what it takes and then from that moment it could be as soon as 24 hours later it could be a few months later if preparation needs to happen then the real estate agent helps them you know with that strategy to get their home on the multiple listing system on the mls by which goes out to all the portals and they are live for the world of viewings so you mentioned mls how does it work yeah, well, it's very different. So the whole reason of why the MLS multiple listing system came into play was because here in America, as a real estate agent, you can be a listing agent or you can be a buyer agent. And the buyer agent will help and get compensated from the listing agent to help a buyer with their needs and interests find the home, negotiate the home, negotiate on repairs and move them into the home. So the multiple listing system here in America, I believe New York City is the only area within the whole country that doesn't have one. It's almost run arguably more like how you do things over there, fascinatingly enough. Yeah. But when some when a real estate agent has, has the listing and, and puts it on the multiple listing system, it goes around to all of the various portals and gets access to every single real estate agent in that market to look at the homes on there get all the information the documents the pictures and so forth so the multiple listing system effectively comes into play to bring the buyers and the sellers together kind of as that gateway so zillow is the equivalent um, portal website here that you know people use more than any other website much like a right move but everything stems from the multiple si listing system which is where all the homes that are on the market are marketed by a real estate agent or firm because technically here in america every house is sold by an agent but it's actually technically sold through the firm so everything goes on to the multiple listing system and then it gets shot out to the rest of the internet universe if you will in terms of where somebody who's thinking of selling then can a buyer come from any other estate agent yeah absolutely so you know the other avenue of course is for someone who wants to sell their home as we call it for sale by owner without using an agent there's a lot more liability um, and issues that come into play there, but a buyer can go directly to a seller. But in the vast majority of times, a buyer could come directly to that listing agent. And then if that agent wants to, they can negotiate both sides of the deal and work and get compensated for both sides. But typically a buyer will work with a buyer agent or a buyer agent specialist who helps buyers drive them around to the various homes, come in, find the home, and then negotiate on that property. So yes, you're absolutely right by the general general gist of how it works. Whereas there, which always blows my mind, if I'm looking to buy a home in, in, in Bushy Heath, for example, I have to directly go through the person who is helping the person sell the home. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Yes, yeah, which I could I can see where you're coming from here. Yeah. 
uh, which fascinates me. So the buyer effectively has no representation. Whereas here in America, if you're a traditional buyer of a home or want to buy a property, you want that representation to be focused 100% on you. Now you're compensated from the, the sellers, but your representation is completely for you, the buyer. Whereas over there, which I've always scratched my head around, as a buyer, it's effectively like the wild, wild west with no genuine representation. Yeah, they're, they're buying from, from the estate agent who is representing the, 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 the seller and the seller only. We have obviously certain responsibilities to the buyer, but the buyer is, is not paying a penny to, to, you know, to buy the property. They're not, uh, not paying a, uh, an estate agent. There are obviously over here, there are plenty of estate agents that are do a home buyer service. So they will be charging a buyer a fee, but, but it's a very small percentage of the market over here that certainly that I see. That's in 5% I would have thought. So 95% at least of sellers are represented only by one estate agent and the buyers are kind of there to sort of look after themselves. Very fascinating. And actually, by, by a similar token, at the same time, I'd be very curious to get your your honest thoughts on fees. So here in and actually licensing too, while I'm at it, because here in America, every real estate agent needs a particular license of that state by which they they do their work. Here in North Carolina, it's 79 hours of, of, of taking the schooling, and then you have a test through the real estate school, and then a test through the state. And then you're a real estate agent and theoretically you can do whatever you want as long as you connect yourself with a real estate company or firm or agency. Whereas there, I know there's no licensing. What's your take on, and I know it's been spoken about for several years now, what's your take on that? Your understanding that, again, just because we real estate agents are licensed, trust me, it does not mean we're necessarily any good or any better, but I do find that footing into the industry fascinating. Yeah, the uh, number of years ago, uh, I did all of my modules through the National Association of State Agents. So I became accredited so that I've done all of those exams. It wasn't 79 hours, but it certainly was uh, a lot of revising. They were, you know, quite tough exams, four modules, and it was health and safety, the, the property law and everything surrounded that. I think it's, you know, we should have much, much more uh, licensing qualifications and exams to take over here personally. But I, I fully support any change to legislation with the state agents in the property market over here. And I wish it was much, much more stringent. It's probably why state agents in the UK have, have actually got a poor name. Where in America, I believe it's, it's very different. You're very highly respected in America, aren't you? I would say it differs. If you're watching Selling Sunset, you may think one thing. But again, the reputation, funnily enough, of a real estate agent is probably fairly similar. They're not terribly highly thought of. Um, I'll just give you the perception, which... You know, a perception typically stems from reality. But I think sometimes our pay is questioned. As an industry, I speak, you know, is it worth paying a real estate agent 3% to sell their home? It's 6% overall, typically, and that may have changed in the COVID times. So are they worth the money? Are they egotistical? Are they money-driven? Are a lot of the questions. So you kind of mentioned about ethics, which gets brought into question. Again, we're held by, quote, higher regulations and such, but it doesn't necessarily mm. tangibly mean anything. So I think um, in part, yes, because there's now a barrier of entry. You know, and that's one thing I love about what you guys are doing uh, from the self-employment model, actually having an experience barrier of entry. I've not seen that to any success level with any other UK estate agency, but here, you know, any old person can go and take a test, but they've had to pay some money and actually do some time. But yeah, I would, I would question uh, how well regarded real estate agents are as well. I think we're probably on a similar playing field. Yeah, well, I think the reputation of estate agents in the UK feels as if it's improving. So somebody selling it in America then, you mentioned 6%, so they, their, their bottom line, the selling is, is six percent so again we actually can get in trouble from saying there's a typical legally you can't say there's a typical because it could be seen as steering and uh, all sorts but me as an agent when i was full on sales i had actually got paid as much from one side of the transaction as seven percent but from both sides of a transaction if you're looking to sell your home it's not uncustomary to expect a real estate agent to say you know five percent to six percent of that overall sale, gross sale of the home will go to real estate agents. Now, bear in mind, the majority of the time, half of that will go to the listing agent who does the marketing, does the negotiating, puts the house on the market. The other half of that will go to the agent, if there is one, who brings the buyer to the property. So yes, 6% overall, but typically it'll be split down the middle, 3% and 3%. I personally think that's tremendous value. I know it's going to sound very foreign to your um, your audience, but if I was selling my home right now and I wasn't a real estate agent, I personally see the value of that and I would be more than happy to pay for that. 
Now, bear in mind, the process of a sale as well is very different as well. So when someone sells their home, they receive an offer, they organize the showings, they organize the marketing and all of that, they negotiate the offer. Then from that point, the job isn't done as a real, as a listing agent in real estate. You then have to nego- allow them to come in and do various due diligence, we call it. There's a due diligence period where they look at the roof, they look at the HVAC systems, which are typical here, right. the nuts and bolts of the home. And then there's a second negotiation period of that, which is for repairs or repair requests, as they call them. The buyer agent on behalf of the buyer will then say, hey, well, listen, there's all these issues we've seen. We've had a professional qualified inspector come out, have a look. So we want this to be done. Then the agents, again, go the second round of negotiating between the repairs and that event. So it's a whole process, which may be in part why the fees are more, but I certainly 100% from my experience, uh, see the value of 6% of the overall home sale of my house going to someone to you know, make sure that it happens both ethically, legally, and makes the most for my my money kind of taken home. So that that sounds much better regulated because a lot of people over here, it's uh, you know a property sold as seen. Unless the estate agent is aware of issues, then they have to obviously divulge that information by law now. But that only came in, I think, in 2015 towards wow. the um, consumer protection regulations. But up until that point, it was, you know, sold as seen. If you want to get a survey done, get a survey done. And then if anything comes, comes back on that survey, then yes, that's where we would then be involved in a negotiation period. But that process uh, of what you've just referred to in America sounds much better because then the buyer is then finding out everything that's wrong with it. And then that, you know, repairs are done. I, I would feel personally a little bit more or less anxious selling a property when a, when a buyer uh, hasn't looked into it properly. And it's not the estate agent job because, of course, I'm representing the client. Yeah. So the seller. So I'm not going to start then getting involved to find things wrong with their house that I'm not aware of. If I'm aware of something, then I have to obviously divulge it. But if I'm not aware of it, then it's not going to be particularly impressed that I'm going to start finding out lots of things wrong that, that need to be repaired. So I would feel probably much more at ease uh, with a process like that, just for saying, saying it out loud. Well, I think we always, how I've always seen my business and quite tangibly my life as well. What is, and I had this conversation earlier today, what if the shoe was on the other foot? You know, you want to make sure that everybody is completely as transparent as possible, but also sometimes a level of knowledge isn't quite the answer as well. You know, you only know what you know. That's why you say you have to, you know, give the information if anything is is known, but you only know what you know. So mm-hmm. having a professional licensed inspector here, which you have to bear in mind as well, though, David, here over the last year, I mean, our market has automatically increased prices here in my small town 30 to 40 percent just during COVID. So a lot of offers are now coming to the table because there's multiple offers. If it's even priced within a realistic price straight away. So people are waiving inspections. People are waving, waving appraisals, which are normally put in place if someone's getting a loan to, you know, understand that the money's being spent well. So mm. it really feels like the Wild West here, but I think things will change. And ultimately the whole process of selling or buying a home, I think is really quite well regulated and really quite thorough on behalf of both parties, which I greatly appreciate because you want someone to be comfortable on both sides. Now, sometimes people may not get as much money as they want, at least to feel that they're having professionally qualified people typically every time coming out and looking at properties. And then we have lawyers as well on the other end who, who do all the paperwork from the state specific side. You know, everything is pretty well well done all in all. So in terms of the market then, it sounds like the, your market there is similar to here. So we've got multiple offers coming in on properties, 20, 30, 35, 40 viewings uh, on properties as soon as we list here at the moment, all down to lack of lack of properties come to the market and a complete over demand. Is that similar in your neck of the woods? Absolutely. Very overwhelming. Uh, and bear in mind, every single offer you have to print out and you have to directly hand at the exact same time to the seller. So they receive 15 offers on the table at the same time, just to make sure you're not giving somebody priority treatment or not. It is, I know it's basic business, supply and demand, but I, I've never seen anything like it. And it's um, yeah, it, it's that crazy time right now where people are being priced out of the market, first time home buyers here. And then you also have a lot of entities who are coming in and buying homes to then turn around and, and flip or to, to rent out. It's, um, it's a very crazy time, certainly amplified by COVID, but certainly the supply and demand has, has really changed things here. I've done many posts on social media about how difficult it is for uh, home buyers at the moment. You know, I'm going around doing a lot of viewings and, and their journeys, their stories. You know, it's it's not good. Barry, great to speak to you. Thank you so much for your time today. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll catch up soon. Brilliant. Likewise, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you. Thanks.